morning everybody. Welcome to the weekend. Um, I've had a bit of a thought while I've been drinking my coffee. I have got so much Alan Class comic stuff. Um, I'm chomping at the bit to show you the more rare items, uh, the more hard to find items, the more unusual items in the Alan Class collection. Uh, but I've got so many Alan Class comics, it's going to take me a long time to get to them. Um, and at five comics per week, we're going to be here doing this for ages. I've got, I've got so much stuff to show you, but it's not just from Alan Class. So um, I know at the moment, this channel seems to be purely Alan Class. And at the moment, to be fair, yes, it is. But I've got such a lot of other wonderful stuff to show you. So, my thinking is, normally I do five Alan Class comics per week. I'm going to try and up the ante to ten. Something I've kind of battled with myself to, to not really do. Um, but I'm thinking, man, I've got such a massive collection of Alan Class. It's still going to take a long, long time before I finish showing you them all. So I'm going to try it. If it's too much... I'll resort back to five per week again. See how it goes. Um, ideally, I want to show you the rarer stuff, but they're way, way away. Can't I seriously cannot get to them? They're just such a lot of stuff. Um, right, got my coffee. You may notice the brilliant, fantastic sunshine we've got here. It's very warm, which is ironic because Jeremy and Angel from Remy Q Studios sent me a wonderful Captain America. Um, sh what, what do you shawl? I think, yes, wrap around wonderful woolen shawl. It's great, but I can't wear it today because it's too too warm. But gradually, as the days turn into colder weeks, you'll be seeing me wearing it when I'm doing my videos. So, and Jeremy, coffee, look, hey, coffee. <laughs> so, one more swig, and then I'll show you what I've got for this week. And as it's Halloween, excuse me, ooh, itchy eye again, not good. Um, I'm going to show you some sinister tales. Now, the earliest one I've got for this week, but not the earliest one in my collection, is Sinister Tales number 75. And it's seen better days, but it's a, a bit of a rare one. I've got to be careful with this because it's, oh, it's showing the the light through the blinds. I hope this isn't spoiling your pleasure too much. But to be fair, it's spoiling mine, so let me see if I can find a better vantage point. Bear with me. Let me pick up this recording video device and put it somewhere else. Let me pop it. Dare I pop it over here or over here? Everything behind me turns blazing hot white. This'll do. So, let me drag my comics over here. Welcome to the other view that you don't see. By the way, this is a, it goes the other way, but it's a, um, like a garden thing. It's going in the garden. It's gonna be uh, waxed and weatherproofed. It's going to go in the garden and we're going to put vegetables in there. So We've got six heavier duty ones of these, but they've all started to, over the years, rot a little bit. So, uh, one replacement. Right, so hopefully this is going to be a little bit better. I think. Let's see now. Right. That'll do. As I was saying, Sinister Tales, number 75. Massive rip out the cover there, um, but it's uh, I didn't get it for much at all. It's another placeholder in my collection. Great artwork. Apparently, this is quite a tough one to find, which is why I think I bought it in the first place at this condition. Story-wise, yeah, it's all it's all the shadow, isn't it? And um, 
some mystery tales, fantastic Ditko art in there. Look at that, that's for astonishing. Oh, look, just look at this. Beautiful. Ditko, Ditko, Ditko. Now, because I've waffled on already and we're past the five minute mark, I will try and speed through these. Some of these comics I won't be showing you the insides. Nice. But, like I always say, you know, if you want to get into sort of Atom Age comics for not a lot of bucks on 90% of the issues, go for the Alan Class staple. You get generally great covers and lots of wonderful Atom Age stories inside, and some Marvel Silver Age surprises as well. It's a good way to get into that particular era of uh, superheroes and mystery stuff and suspense and um, you know different times but it's it's wonderful if you if you have a liking for that sort of stuff yeah Alan class and Charlton is a, uh, a a less expensive way to get to that particular Nirvana anyhow sinister tales 75 it's lovely, great cover, great artwork. Bye. Next up is Sinister Tales number 80 with Mandrake the Magician on the front. Love that artwork. It's a little bit simplistic again, but not too bad at all. So yeah, quickly run through the insides, quickly. Which is anything that really takes my uh, takes my um, interest is the word I'm looking for. I'll show it you. As I'm flicking through this, it's um, I can't say it's all totally my <laughs> my interest. But it is good stuff. It is good stuff. One whole shilling for you to buy at that time. Lovely. Got to remember, Ken, I'm not showing the viewers five today. I'm showing more than that. Moving on to Sinister Tales number 159. Bit of a jump up. This is a great cover. Ever wish you could disappear? You'll change your mind when you read the sensational story, The Circular Trap. That's lovely. Not bad condition either, actually. Got a colour breaking crease at the top. Spine's not too bad. Cut the spine ticks. Not bad at all. Ogden Whitney art in a lot of this. And virtually, if any, Marvel content. So I think by these post decimal times, 15p on the cover gives it away. Uh, Alan Class, I should think, would have lost the license mostly to um, licensing Marvel stories. So I think it would have firmly come down to Charlton. They still have the license for, for that. Very nice. As I'm sure you'll agree. I hope you'll agree. Moving on up. Sinister Tales number 160. Yeah, one of those typical cross time capers where the their present meets the past. Kind of faded this one, I think. Um then again, it could be just the natural printing of the time. You've got like a solid orange down here. Going up to like a faded orange at the top. Nice bit of writing there. I'm pretty sure that didn't come with it. But, um... 
has it faded? Or is that just as it is supposed to be? You can just about see below the 15p mark there, the shilling mark. Just about see it, one shilling. Just about. Yeah, lots of Ogden Whitney art in this one. Love Ogden Whitney, Whitney but um, man, you can just imagine how much time and effort he put into just doing all the little anatomical bits and the details for the backgrounds. Incredible. The time was money, you know. The more pages you could get out, the quicker you could do it, the quicker you could draw it, the more money you'd make. So if you spent all that time doing all that fine detail, you're actually um, emasculating yourself. You are not making more money in your back pocket if you did, you know, half as many pages as as other artists would do, you know. That didn't quite come out well. I knew what I was trying to say. Basically, you know, Kirby could rip out 10 pages compared to other artists, three to five pages. Uh, Kirby made the money, other artists didn't because of the page count. And like I think it was Mark said the other week, um, Charlton, one of the worst payers in the industry. Moving on up. Secrets of the Unknown, number 163. I've seen this cover a few times. You see what I mean about the like the background? It's almost like it's painted. I mean that is not damage to the cover. That, that is how it is, how it was printed. The book seems to be getting thinner. No title on the spine, as Alan Class directed to the printers. Virtually zero marvel in here. By the way, this week I, um, yesterday actually, Friday, uh, I got one of my personal grails, uh, foreign comic grails, which I won't talk too much about. I will save that for a, a video in another time, another day. Uh, but it's taken me. Wouldn't be fibbing if I said about eight years to acquire to actually find a copy. So that'll be coming to the channel quite soon. Secret of the Unknown number 165. And in my very humble opinion, extremely humble opinion, one of the most boring comic covers I've ever witnessed in my life. That doesn't really scream by me if I saw that on a in a a uh, a corner shop shelf. Oh no. No. Not great. Not great at all. Again, my humble opinion, some of you lovely people might be going, oh, that's fantastic. And, uh, you know, more power to you. But, um, doesn't do it for me, unfortunately. You know, talking about, as I said before, about, you know, more detail you put in, the, the longer it takes to um, finish up a, art, a page of artwork. So more detail, less money for you. Look at how much detail is in there. My God. I mean, I love detail. I'm just thinking of the poor artists being able to pay their their way and you know <laughs> families and Jesus I mean look look at the detail uh, incredible I mean in a lot of ways I'd like to think that in modern comics the artists could actually do that amount of detail but Whenever I pick up a modern comic book, 
I always put it back now because they're just done so quickly. <sighs> That's why my personal preferences these days is in the past. Again, it's all personal, you know, got my own opinion. Sorry. I know it's sacrilege, but I've even started to slow down on my Captain America modern age monthly comics. It's I'm just not feeling it at the moment. The only time I feel you know that that feeling, you know, why am I doing this is by going back into the past and seeing how things used to be done. I don't know, we're all different, aren't we? Secrets of the Unknown, number 173. Now, this is a great cover. Tons of detail. Uh, I think back then, um, storytellers had, the, had a preoccupation with time. Being out of time, time stopped, moving to the future. Um, you know, past and present and future collide. had that sort of premise. Great cover, love it. Even the dog looks like it's motionless. Which is a great effect to achieve because it's only 2D. Uh, you know, uh, etching shall we say. Oh, I said shall we say, that's my own personal thing to dislike that I do. But you know, it's great, you can obviously tell that the the fella there is motionless in time, the girl behind him. And the cop, of course. But it's just the little things. I love it, I love it. How you can show so much in in a page of artwork. And not being over detailed as well. They've got the emotion right. They've captured the essence of being absolutely still. Terrific. Just okay, Steve. Okay, space adventurer. So I was just checking out the characters in this, and caught caught my eye. I'd just like to say as well, welcome to the new subscribers for the channel. Uh, this channel is not, certainly not one of the biggest channels on the internet, on YouTube even. But um, you lovely people who follow me, you're a loyal bunch and I thank you very much. And I hope the content I bring you is up your street. Lovely. Moving on. Oh, we're coming to the end now. Sinister Tales number 212. I've seen that cover published a few times. Actually, by this time, yeah, Alan Class would have been just going back into his archives of what he could still use and reuse and reuse. But so thin. Are these still 68 pages? Answers on a postcard, please. I think they're probably around about 48 pages, and I could be wrong. But nah, 68 pages? I don't think so. Thunder Agent. Lightning in the Web Titans. Will there ever come a time where I stop reading comics altogether? I don't think so. I mean, compare me now, oh, Chickstone, of course. Compare me now with like 30 years ago, um, where I was reading just about everything that I could put my grubby little hands on. Um, I have slowed down considerably. But can I see. That's just fantastic, sorry. But can I see me ever stopping being a part of this lovely medium? I don't think so. Um, this industry is so vast. Uh, it's just still so much to explore. 
there's still so much I've got to find and, and read and acquire and read um, yeah but will there come a time when I actually start reading modern comic books again probably not um, it, for me personally it's been a slow steady decline since about 2014 um, yeah I think that was probably the time when I just as a point in time when I stopped slabbing Captain America comics and I mean I used to collect still a hell of a lot of other comics at that point but since 2014 it's kind of ebbed away slowly but surely to the time where I'd only get Saga uh, and then yeah, Covid hit and um, I just picked those up digitally now and I took out a Marvel Unlimited subscription last month which for a year's reading of comics uh, hundreds and thousands of comics for £69 I thought that was a good deal you'd only dip into it a couple of times a month it's fine um, yeah but actual paper paper comics no I can't see me really picking them up and getting involved again in those um, I can't see there being a turnaround in the comics industry to grab folks of my age is attention um, I can't quite put my finger on it I think possibly it's the overuse of the storytelling same old same old Personally, the, the art, bar the exceptions of uh, just a couple of comic artists, don't really touch me. They don't grab me. The artwork is you know, certainly nothing compared to that. Um, I will shout out one particular artist, and if he's watching this, he's going to be groaning. Uh, that's Mike Perkins. Uh, Perkins art actually it's just amazing modern day artist he breaks all the rules spends time putting the detail in his visuals tell the story uh, so yeah for modern day art Mike Perkins big tick for me I will be sticking with Mike until I'm no longer around uh, yeah modern comic books for me not for me bar the exception but I've still got a lot to look back to in the past okay. that was a bit of a ramble wasn't it I didn't really mean to do that noting that I'm doing 10 comic books this week I should really be focusing on them rather than my random thoughts Sinister Tales number 214 and please in the comments if you think this video for this week is too long please let me know because if you're not enjoying the length of time I might go down from uh, 10 comics to 8 comics or maybe back to 5 comics please let me know what doesn't make you bored ticks my box Yeah, I think even by the time you get to this this particular age, quite late, even the paper's different. It's like a finer newsprint rather than the uh, the stuff that soaks up all the black and the white. It's a very different type of paper. Dynamo. And the last one for this week. Is extremely thick, a full 100 pages. Sinister Tales number 220, which is, to be fair, just a few months removed from the previous issue. But you can tell the end is near. The books are smaller, even though they're thicker. a lot of great content for a young kid to read 
and you've still got some Atlas tails, which is lovely. Oh, gorgeous artwork. Yeah, Al Williamson. There we go. I'm sorry if I might have offended people with my previous comments about how I see the modern world of comics. Um, I'm outspoken, I have opinions. Uh, but I always say everybody's different and this is only my opinion. So, on that note, and now a half cold cup of coffee. I will bid you bye for now. Have a great weekend, have a fantastic week going forward. And I really hope that you join me next week. Please let me know in the comments how you feel about this episode. It doesn't have to be a massive paragraph. Honestly, uh, I'm not asking you to spend that much time if, you, you know, if you've got other things to do, like we all have. But just drop a few lines saying what I could improve on this channel. Or if I'm doing fine, if this is what you want. Uh, longer videos, showing more content. Please let me know. If, Again, shorter videos, shorter content, I'm equally fine. Bye for now. Thank you so much for watching.